February 2004, after groups opposed to the Aristide government seized control of cities and towns throughout Haiti and closed in on the capital, Mr. Aristide resigned and fled to South Africa. U.S.-led armed forces under the authority of the United Nations Security Council were sent to Port-au-Prince to stabilize the situation and to oversee the installation of an interim government. The United Nations has spent some $5 billion on peacekeeping operations since 2004 peacekeeping operations. In 2006, Mr. Preval was again elected president amidst allegations of impropriety. Will you comment on that? That, that Again, viewers, that was from the New York Times, quote unquote. The New York Times has a long history of being on the side of the elite in Haiti. They have been on the side um, of the Haitian elite and the international elite that maintain those conditions of poverty and repression in Haiti. And so I'm not surprised at all. For example, the New York Times during the bicentennial celebrations in Haiti, they had the goal to lie so outrageously, to say that only 1,200 people or 1,500, between 12 or 1,500 people, can't quite remember correctly, but it's, it wasn't higher than 1,500. Their figure attended the bicentennial celebrations. And it was such a lie because we of the Haiti Action Committee had received the photos. I was present. I was there. And I, I, knew I know it you was, were there. It was like over 200,000 people in the plaza, you know, right in front of the palace. 200,000. If and they described it as no more than 1,500. Exactly. Well, and they had done that too during Aristide's inaugural in right. 2001. And so I'm not surprised that they could say that. So there was a photo. And we took that photo and, and put it out there and on the internet to show the people how the New York Times had lied. And so um, they were forced to, re to put a correction in now, the paper. Let me stop you right there for a second and just sure. let our viewers understand that um, the 2004 bicentennial was the, the uh, 200th anniversary of the first black republic uh, in the world uh, that has actually liber liberated liberated themselves from bondage, from slavery. And they had the Haitian people uh, who are always characterized as the poorest uh, in, in the Western Hemisphere mm -hmm. are, uh, they've never, uh, they always fail to uh, state that they are the most valiant, the bravest and most courageous people in the Western Hemisphere because they had literally battled their way out of slavery, kicked Napoleon's troops, um, his crack troops, yes. kicked butt, mm -hmm. had kicked out the Spanish and... The British. And, and the British. That's correct. Exactly. Under the leadership of Toussaint Louverture. And, and Desalines. And when he was uh, taken, um, when he was kidnapped, also, <laughs> yes. uh, Dessalines took over and completed the work of actually achieving independence from France. Yes, and that was started in what we call Black August. That's correct. 21st. That's correct. It Which? was started actually today, is the uh, on 14th of August, 1791. Uh, that was the Congress during which all the um, all the uh, our, our African and uh, African foremothers and fathers who were kidnapped into slavery came together in a secret meeting and held a congress of all of the delegates from all the various plantations. Right. And they pledged at that nightly congress uh, that they would no longer be, remain slaves and they would fight their way to freedom and they were fighting for self-determination. Right. And, and I have to open our live line. Certainly. I almost forgot. Uh, if you'd like to call in and ask a question of our guest, Pierre Le Boissier, it's 415-621-4473. And sure, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and it took uh, 12. So today is a very important day for us in Haiti and for people all over the world. Now, what these imperialist powers have done is right now they are using missionaries, Christian missionaries, to equate our beautiful leaders like Bookman, who led that, that Congress, and Cecil Fatima, 
who is the woman who was also a co-leader with Bookman, and they are saying that they were they had made a pact with the devil. Oh. And right now they are they and they've been doing that even prior to the bicentennial, in order to get many Haitians to be ashamed of their legacy, of their culture. Kilo, these are things I used to read in the history books as to what happened long time ago. This kind of crass, uh, racist cover-up and lies. But it's happening today. Right. And, and, oh, yeah. Um, well, look at the lie that uh, the New York Times precisely. just... Precisely. They, they change history with And just their to lies. correct that, President Arisid was actually kidnapped by U.S. Special Forces on February 28th or February 29th, 2004, and he was taken to um, the Central African Republic against his will, uh, not knowing where he was being taken to, he and his wife and children. Right. Um, and actually, he and his wife, actually his children were not there. But uh, he was, it was a rescue mission very quickly that, um, that you know, brought him to Jamaica, and from there, the South African graciously offered him asylum. Right, and we have a call coming in. Hello? Hello? I um, want to commend this gentleman for uh, being such a brave man and standing up against the imperialists and uh, being able to go around and, and, and speak his mind and not be afraid. If he is afraid, he's still a very brave person for... Uh, been able to stand up against the imperialists. Uh, I read some information online once that uh, about uh, Aristide and how he was warned that he needed to get out of the country because uh, there were people here in the United States named the uh, Rumsfeld and uh, Dick Cheney who wanted him assassinated. And also, uh, I'd like to say uh, that today being uh, August the 14th, uh, there should be a, a lot of celebration, and I'm, I'm one who am very happy that the Haitians uh, broke away and, and got their freedom. Well, thank you uh, so much for your call. Thank you very much, too. All right. Thank you so much. And I agree greatly. with you. Pierre Labossier is a very brave man. He's my brother, and we first met, actually, when... He was uh, advocating for the return of Jean Bertrand Aristide, and he uh, facilitated my meeting uh, Aristide and uh, getting to interview him eventually. And um, I, I, re I was able to understand firsthand why the Haitian people love him, love him to death, because um, Aristide was actually drafted by the Haitian.